Hello, welcome by a new Julia tutorial on characters and strings. Um, now, characters in Julia are made in this way. Um, for instance, if I want the character A, that's a character. So uh, if I type type of C, it prints that it's a uh, character. It can be uh, all kinds of characters like uh, um, emoticons, as long as this uh, is a Unicode. So type of C, it's a character. Or it can be something like um, a U with an umlaut. Or uh, Japanese characters. Many things. Uh, strings are basically uh, a sequence of uh, of characters, and they are formed with double uh, quotes. So, S is a string. That's a string. If you type type of S, it's a string. Or they can be formed with triple quotes. For instance, here I, I have a uh, quote from Bush Aldrin. And if I do print S, yes, I get it uh, neatly. Um, if you want to add uh, quotes in your string, you have to uh, escape them with uh, an escape uh, and a slash. So, for instance, S is uh, he said hello. Then uh, this is uh, the inner, the outer uh, quotes are used uh, to mark that this is a string, and the um, quotes here are just uh, part of the string. So if I do print s, it uh, gives this. Uh, strings and uh, of. Uh, Characters and strings of uh, length one are uh, different. So if I have C is A and S is uh, string uh, A, and if I do uh, C is uh, S, it says that's not the same. But if I do C is uh, S1, it is the same because S1 is the character. A. Uh, characters and integers are also different. So uh, one is uh, the character one that's not the same. But if I parse the um, character I, so that I get an integer, it is uh, the same because. Um, if I parse the character one to an integer, uh, I get one again. Um, in uh, Julia, um, every letter and symbol has a code. Uh, Julia uses uh, Unicode. There are they are stored in the computer with uh, UTF-8, uh, and they uh, some. Uh, symbols take uh, take a one uh, code unit and that's a four or eight bytes and others two three or four so if I uh, here I have an um, loop over uh, four uh, symbols a uh, o with the umlaut, uh, the um, emoticon a heart, and then um, this symbol. Then uh, each one has the first have just one code unit, and the others have two or more. Um, this is the and um, 
code uh, units um, are used um, for the indexing, but uh, so not every code, every index is the start of a valid um, character. So um, if I have, for instance, here the word verrückt, it means crazy in German, then the um, this, the V, E, the R, the R, and the take all uh, one code unit, but the U with the umlaut is two code units. So um, if I at some point this code will break because then you are in a um, code unit that doesn't code for a character. So let's see. B. This occurs all well, and then comes the umlaut, and then you get the string index error because the sixth index doesn't encode for an um, for a character uh, however most of the time you don't need the index and you can just look through the character so for character in s so let's do it like this and you see now it works uh, as expected so most of the time you don't need uh, to look like this. If you really need indexes, you can. Uh, it's the best to use uh, its index s. Then it will only uses the index uh, that that code for a character. You see, this all works fine. So it says index one, two, three, four, five, six. It uh, skips seven, eight, nine. Okay, let's go to some. Uh, functions to mani man manipulate strings um, well one useful um, function is the split function so you, here we have a string programming in Julia is nice and now we are going to split it in words and um, so it uses the space to split the word in several strings and it uh, returns an array of strings um so if you check split you can see uh, uh what other options are for uh, um for split so instead of using uh, the space you can also use an uh, an other uh eliminator so for instance uh Here um, I split the words and then I loop over each word and then I print it and I sleep for 0 0.2 seconds. So if you want to replace a word, you can do that with uh, replace. So we have the sentence um, programming in Python is fun. Well, programming in Julia is of course much funner. So, uh, oh. Much more fun, and um, so if I do a replace sentence Python with Julia, uh, it replaces uh, Python with Julia, and we get this string. Well, let's go to uh, con concatenating of strings. So we have the definition of the empty string, string of the empty set, I mean. So for all x, x is not in the empty set. It has no elements. And, uh, but you can also explain this in words. So if you have in words, the definition of an empty set in, in words, the empty set doesn't have elements. And now I want to uh, merge them. So um, one way to do that is this um, f empty set star uh, multiplication sign then uh, in words and then um, in words that's here 
and then I have uh, the two strings uh, if the three strings uh, um, added together you can also repeat the string so for instance if we have a b and then if I do s to the power 10 I get a b a b a b etc I can also use the repeat function so s repeats uh, 15 for instance then I get a b a b uh, 15 times uh, the padding function is also useful you can pad at the left side or the right side so if I do uh, l pad high and then 10 it makes um, the string uh, 10 long with putting uh, spaces uh, before and uh, so if I do uh, length ans it is 10 long um, well, guess what happens if I do this so I have the string alive I make it lowercase, I reverse it, and then I take uh, make the first letter uppercase. Now, then you get evil. Uh, another useful function is strip, L strip, R strip. For instance, if I do um, um, R strip, with, uh, this is a string with a lot of spaces, then it removes the spaces on the right. Uh, or on the left or on the left and the right and you get high back uh, start with is a uh, test whether a string starts with another string so for instance starts uh, hi Julia with hello no uh, ends uh, hi YouTube with YouTube and the answer is yes true uh, first, you get uh, part of the string. So if you hello, two, three, you get the first three uh, letters back. Um, occurs in does test whether uh, a certain string is part of another string. So uh, occurs. Albert in Albert Einstein, yes, or and it doesn't need to be the start, it can also be something in the middle, for instance, space, ein, that's also true, but, um, ah, A, E is not part, although you have the letters A and E, but we have um, also the function subset of, subset equal Albert Einstein and then it checks whether this the set of the characters A and E is a subset of the characters uh, A, L, B, all the characters that are in this string and that's true so for instance also um, this is true Um, this is also possible so that you put it all the way around. This false set is not an element of the Albert Einstein. Well, if you have the um, string, if you have the um, variable first name with uh, value Albert, and we want to make full name. Uh, then we can use string interpolation. So string interpolation is uh, starts with a dollar sign, and then first name is the the name of the um, uh, of this um, a variable. So then we get Albert Einstein. Full name Albert Einstein. Oh yeah, then we have the receipt function. Um, just to illustrate what we can do, so function receipt that takes a dictionary 
it first calculates the longest string, so maximum length keys D. Uh, S is length for products price with D. So we start with the empty string and then we are going to add uh, one by one um, the product name We make it at least M long so that is nicely aligned M and then I add the price in euros because here in Europe we have euros and then um, I interpolate price and a new line and um, then I want at the bottom after um, a line I want um, the total price so I want M of this um, bars and then Again, a new line. And then I want um, total price um, total. Um, and then I forgot to um, calculate the total price that is uh, sum values D and this should be okay I think return S so I have here a dictionaries with prices And then I do uh, receipt D and I do funds uh, print S. Now you see that it looks very nice. It puts all the prices um, below its other and the total price. So uh, looks very beautiful. Uh, other useful function is the read line function read line then std in so the standard input uh, so if I uh, write here uh, high then it stores uh, high in A and if I uh, for instance um, type a number then it uh, stores it in a string well, if I want to convert that to a string, to an integer, that's um, then uh, int a doesn't work, or convert int a uh, doesn't work. You have to use the parse function, and then it makes a, a number out of it. Okay, now I have some um, exercises. So I have here um, a string. So that is the and then um, I want you to make a, a, a function. S is uh, put in a box. And then if I print line S, if I make this a little bit bigger, you see uh, it makes a beautiful uh, box around uh, the quote. Uh, so I want you to make uh, a function put in a box S that takes a string 
and put whatever the string is in an in a nice box. Uh, then I want you to make uh, a game that uh, that let lets you guess a number uh, between one and nine, and um, that uses the parse function and the read line uh, std in function. So um, I have it already. Guess a number. Guess a number below ten. Guess number. Type stop if you want to stop. So if I type stop, it stops. Uh, well, let's guess one. Oh, one was not good. Maybe nine. Nine is also not good. Eight. Well, eight was the right number. Also, if I put make a too big number, it tells me that I should type uh, one, two, up to nine, or stop. Maybe two will do. Three. Yes. Okay, that's it for today. Good luck with the exercises and uh, see you next time.